perfect snowy day to check out our log here. Um, I want to do a couple things, but obviously I've got it on the ground. I measured it out. It's going to be tough to get eight foot pieces out of here. And the more I think about this, I want to cut back this side. Looks like there was a big knot here or something that weakened it, but I just want to cut it back and make sure it's not rotten. Doesn't look like it is there. Um, and then on this end also, just going to take a screwdriver here. And test it. That baby is solid. I'll show you what that looks like. There's no rot in that side either. So it looks like this will be a good candidate to get some boards out of. You can see here, it's nice solid red oak. So what I'm going to do... Before I spend all the effort to make some boards out of this, like I said, I think the butt end's okay. Um, the trouble with that end is you got the uh, flares out by the butt. So I need a, a relatively flat surface to lay a board on to guide my Alaskan mill um, to make some boards out of this. And there's kind of a side here. Anyway, I'm going to cut this off so I can kind of roll it around and, and see where a nice flat spot to put a board is. And I may have to take a cut on the butt end too just to get rid of some of that flare so my board sits decently down. But let's get to it. covered up here. As I suspected, there is some rot, big old knot in there. So I'm going to, you can see obviously it's split up pretty good. I could come and mill this and then with my individual boards, just see where it gets good um, and cut off that end. But the but the longer this is, obviously, the more work it is for, for the saw, more time it is to mill it. So I'm just going to work back a little bit and see if we can get a little bit cleaner. Flare is pretty significant on the butt end here, the more I look at it. So I'm going to trim that off too. It might make the log a little more, more manageable. This this is a, a beast. I think it's frozen to the ground a little bit too. get some Alaskan milling done on our red oak log. So the first step here is to put our mill attachment on our chainsaw. This one is made out of steel. I bought it off of eBay for that very reason. Most of the commercially available ones are made out of aluminum, which is nice because they're lighter, but I thought, well, maybe it makes sense to have it steel that way if I want to weld attachments to it or modify it. I could do that, but I haven't needed to do that yet, so was that necessary? Probably not. But uh, this is a pretty simple device. The Alaskan Mill is a pretty simple device. Um, really, it's just a guide for our chainsaw. Um, so this, these parts here clamp on the bar, and then 
This part rides on your log to guide you along and try to keep you square and straight through the thickness. So to set this baby up, all we have to do is slide our bar assembly through here. And then clamp it in place. You can see there's a few adjustments on this. Uh, the first one here, depending on the length of your bar, there's some adjustments here. To slide this support out. So I'm going to slide it out as far as I can on the bar, really to try to maximize the width that we can cut because that log uh, is right at the limit when I was cutting through it for this 25 inch bar. So we're going to need all of the length that we can get. So I'm going to clamp this in place here. Step we have to take when, when doing this log besides prepping it like we already did, we've got our log prepped. We need to guide our first cut um, because the log is rounded obviously and we need a track or a flat piece for our mill attachment to ride against and to give us a, a nice even cut down the length of the log. So I'm gonna use this two by 10 here and screw it to the log with some normal wood screws. So let's go get that set up on the log. This is on the, the shorter side of, of things I've done, but obviously it doesn't matter if this board is a little bit too long. We could just uh, can slide the attachment on there, no problem. Losing my impact driver in the snow is a problem though. Okay, so I'm just gonna run these screws down in the log, just kind of feel for a, for a natural kind of spot on the log. I'd prefer to have it level, but it wants to sit there on a bit of an angle, so I might just leave it there, most stable position, and give it a go. I might, uh, rock the log a little bit to try to get the the piece a little level but uh doesn't really not completely necessary to have your guide and chainsaw level it'll just be look a little awkward when you're cutting so I'm, what i'm doing here is kind of just feeling I picked a spot that wasn't deflecting when I put that first screw in. And just want to make sure you don't pin it down to a spot that's going to force the board to bow, obviously. Looks like my... Yeah, that if I push it down on this end, it wants to come down a little bit. Right in here might be good. There, that's on there pretty good. Two screws sunk in there, probably all it's going to take. Just going to rock it up and pack some snow under there. Get that piece level.
There, nice and stable. Boards level and flat. We're ready to get the saw out and start cutting. The last adjustment we have to make is on the depth of our cut, which is governed by this bottom surface. And then the distance to our saw blade. So these are the screws I use to attach our track to our log. And obviously if I leave it at this depth, we're gonna cut right through our screws. We don't wanna do that. And the first cut, I like to take a healthy cut, just the shape of the wood. Obviously you're gonna get a very small board until you get more towards the center of the log. Um, so it's a lot of time and effort to make these cuts. I don't really want to waste a lot of time making real, real small boards. I have done it in the past, but uh, I have found that isn't the most fruitful. So we just loosen up our bolts here and we can make our adjustment just by sliding this piece up and down on the posts. Now this is what will obviously determine the thickness of our board from left to right as we're cutting. So we want to get this pretty close. So I'm just going to get it up in this area and snug it up finger tight so I can then take measurements and bump it around as I, as I see what works. So that's actually not bad right there. Going with a six and a half to this bar, which is more like five inch cut. My first one, I'll take five inches off. So I'm just measuring from my bar to here. And my bar to there. And I'm making sure that I've got the same measurements on both sides so that the thickness of my board will be good. So I'm going to set this really to the bottom it is six and seven sixteenths loosen up this side and get the same All right, we're good to go cut. This will give you a pretty good view of how this process works. You can see here we have our two by 10 on top. That's providing our flat surface for our guide to run against. And then we just bring our saw, cut into our log and work our way down.
Well, that really sucks. This log's too big for my setup. So I'm just gonna make it into firewood. That really sucks. You can see there what the process is. The cut started pretty good. I didn't want to make firewood. Poop. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little escapade today. Hopefully in the near future I have a log to show you how to actually Alaskan mill and have some success there. So that would be great. On a side note, this car her hat is very high quality. The knit is very thick and tight and it's a warm hat but my head feels like a grape going through a wine press i don't know if there's a version for big heads but this one says adult it's made for a child i had one other one it's the same way and i stretch it out i think i put it across my knee and pull it till it's ripping it's still too small big head problems. Thanks for watching. Adios.